This is the new TC Pride Podcast, episode 106, on location at the Turf Club, with Reclaim for Art Heels. TC Pride Podcast on location at the Turf Club in St. Paul for Art Heels. Uh, this is a fantastic event put on by the folks at Reclaim, and I'm here with... Uh, Beckett Maravellius. I'm the Development and Communications Coordinator for Reclaim. So I do many things. I do trainings for corporations and uh, small businesses and other groups around uh, queer and trans competency. I do all of our fundraising. Um, I do all of our communications work, Facebook, Instagram, etc. I wear many hats. Um, that is that, that's a lot of hats. Yes, lots of hats. <laughs> but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Um, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously, uh, so, so tell me a little about the, the organization for people that might not be familiar with it. Yeah, so Reclaim started um, about nine years ago by our founder, Janet Bystrom. Janet was working at a queer and trans organization doing therapy with a group of queer youth and the organization closed because it was during the recession and as many of us know, organizations, nonprofit organizations were closing all over the place. So the organization closed and the youth came to Janet and they said, we need your services. And so within three weeks, those youth and a bunch of other adults raised $35,000 and gave it to Janet and that became Reclaim. Reclaim started as two therapists. Today we're a staff of 15. And our mission is to provide therapy and mental health support to youth so they may reclaim their lives from oppression in all of its forms. So what that means is we have an intersectional approach. We um, have therapists of color. We have queer and trans therapists. We have therapists that understand what the youth are going through. And every week we see about 80 distinct youth. Every year about 165. And the youth that come to us, you know, they vary in their need. Um, I think one thing that is really important to to note is that you know, every year we take intake statistics, right? So when a youth comes to reclaim, we ask them a, a series of questions. How suicidal are you? Do you do self-harm, etc.? And every year until 2017, the statistics were getting better. In 2017, when Trump was elected, we saw a sharp drop in our statistics. More suicidal youth, more youth experiencing self-harm, more youth experiencing bullying, more youth experiencing depression. And so, oh, go ahead. And and in general, we should just also let people know who maybe don't realize that that queer and trans youth, specifically uh, queer and trans youth of color, uh, disproportionately are are affected by by a lot of these things. Absolutely, absolutely. And I should say also that 90% of the youth we serve are transgender. And so they face a whole host of issues that other kids don't face, right? Like they're bullied in school, they have to deal with families that may or may not accept them, you know, and so they come to Reclaim as a place of refuge, as a place of support, as a place where they can feel safe. Um, I facilitate one of the gender groups at Reclaim, and a gender group is a group, is a therapy group, a group of youth come together every Tuesday night and they talk about their experiences with gender, with you know, harassment, with whatever, and they share their experiences and they find solidarity with each other. And even times just, just having that space to talk about what's going on can make a huge impact. Yeah, and you know, one of my favorite quotes from a youth, um, they said, gender group is not only where I can be myself, it is where I can become myself. And I think that idea of becoming, of becoming who you are in that space is so powerful, right? Reclaim provides a space where youth may come, they may be unsure of their gender identity, and they, they are allowed to be free to experiment, to try out new ideas, to try out new pronouns, and it's beautiful to watch. And it sounds like y'all do a, a lot of great work in the community, but there's obviously still a long way to go, which is why we're here tonight. We're holding a fundraiser to continue to fund the work that Reclaim is doing. Yeah, there's so much need. I mean, you know, every month we turn away at least 25 youth who need services because we don't have capacity to serve them. You know, we're expanding as fast as we can, 
and yet there is so much need that the youth keep calling. And of course we, you know, um, we refer them to external therapists who can help them, but there are increasingly more and more transgender and queer youth that need therapy and need that support and need that community. And so Reclaim provides that essential resource. Um, and, you know, I think that I've seen youth come and really blossom into who they really are. And it's beautiful to watch. And, of course, this is one way that people can support the organization by coming to these events and, and contributing financially. I imagine there are a lot of other ways that people can, can help the organization, too. Absolutely. You can volunteer with us, um, sign up for our volunteer list. Uh, give a financial donation. Um, I think the most beautiful thing about Reclaim, well, not the most beautiful thing, but a beautiful thing about Reclaim. There's a lot of beautiful things about Reclaim. There's a lot of beautiful things, right? But a beautiful thing about Reclaim is that we are majority donor funded. So, and our donors give gifts of $250 or less. They're giving smaller gifts and that's what funds us. It's the community. The community wants this resource. And I think that's so important and so indicative of the fact that, you know, our larger, greater Twin Cities community wants to support queer and trans youth. Well, fantastic. And how, how can people find out about everything you're doing online and how to get involved? Yeah, uh, please go to reclaim.care, that's C-A-R-E, and you can check out our Facebook, um, just search Reclaim on Facebook, and our Instagram at reclaim under, or reclaim under slash Q, oh God. <laughs> LGBTQ <laughs> youth. <laughs> that, that, yeah, those social URLs are a little weird sometimes, yeah, right? So. It's a little weird. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much and enjoy the rest and good luck uh, and good luck with everything you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The politics of visibility mean that queer and trans ways of loving and of being most at home within our bodies carries within those acts certain risks. If we lived in a world free from homophobia and transphobia, this would not be the case. But instead, our bodies are familiar with that fear, that dis-ease. Yet we are who we are in spite of all that, and sometimes in order to spite all of that. It means that our joys, our loves, our attractions, our visions, our fears, our declarations and definitions of beauty and strength and power and difference and truth have much at stake. Therefore, it is crucial that we grasp deeply and hold closely that which is most strongly felt within us. In the words of black lesbian feminist mother warrior poet Audre Lorde, I feel, and therefore I can be free. We must struggle not to lose sight of those parts of ourselves which are most raw, most open, most generous, most hopeful, most vulnerable. Queer ways of being and loving open up possibilities for us all. I don't feel like anything more than one messy, imperfect, muddling person. I am, however, trying to thrive in community with others despite, and in order to spite, the forces which would see difference annihilated. Words to Young Queers by Quinn Rivenberg. Quinn, I use they, them pronouns. I am a new therapist at Reclaim. I'm the art therapist there. So people listening to the podcast can't see that you're actually holding a little uh, guitar, ukulele, something. So are you actually performing tonight as well? I am performing, yeah, this is a, um, it's a tenor ukulele, it was my um, racist homophobic grandfather's ukulele, and he would be um, turning over in his grave knowing that it was a part of this event tonight. <laughs> and speaking of this event, tell, tell people kind of about this event and kind of how it came into being and sort of what it's all about. Yeah, so um, at Reclaim, we uh, strongly believe that art can be a mode of healing. It can be a way of expressing yourself about things that you can't quite find words for, things that are um, really important to you but that might be beyond verbal expression. And um, a really great modality to do that is through art or visual art and music um, as a mode of healing. Um, so I use that in my art therapy practice, and we're going to see that tonight here um, with, we've got um, some community performers and also um, some big name performances um, down at the Turf Club. Yeah. And, then, and then tell me a little about the music you'll be playing tonight. Yeah, so I'm going to do three pieces. One um, is going to be a tribute to the um, queer and trans youth who we have lost to suicide. Um, it's uh, based off a song by Patti Smith who wrote this song in the 80s when her beloved Robert Maplethorpe died of AIDS-related causes. Um, and then I'll be performing a spoken word piece that's about um, the importance of 
vulnerability and visibility as queer and trans people. And then the last is just a fun song that I love and is dear to my heart. That sounds awesome. Are you online? Are you on the Spotify, the iTunes, anywhere? Can people get your music uh, anywhere else? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Quintilate, because I'm mostly a visual artist. <laughs> right Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan Casada. And Ryan's mom, Francine Love. And Ryan, you're one of our performers tonight. Yes, I am. Yeah, and how did you get involved with the event? Um, I got involved with the event from a friend I knew from San Francisco recommended me to shift forward, and that's how they, they came together, yeah. And you said you're both from out of town. I am from New York. Yeah. And what do you think of Minneapolis so far? Oh, I love it. It's great. Have you been here before? I have never been here. And so uh, what, what capacity are you in here tonight uh, with Ryan? I have been Ryan's roadie for over a decade now. Yeah. Is Ryan a good boss? He, the best. The best. <laughs> the best boss ever. So for people who aren't familiar with your music, what, what can you tell me about uh, your music? My music is um, all real life stories and it's just stuff I've been through or I've seen my friends go through and uh, there's some political songs and a lot of love songs and I do like pretty much like all different genres so there's a little something for everyone. And it must make you pretty proud to see Ryan performing uh, in front of tons of people on a regular basis. Every time. Every time. I'm very proud. Roya Maltaji. Roya, so we actually know each other through another organization. Your business is actually part of uh, part of the Quorum community. Absolutely. I'm involved with Quorum. I'm a certified financial planner, and I've been involved with Quorum, I believe, since I started my practice, which was back in 2003-2004 uh, CUSP. Um, so it's been a, a long time, and I've been involved in a myriad of different ways, uh, all of which have helped to grow my connections in the community and grow the community. That is like an awesome commercial for Quorum. That was great. Thank you. Um, and also, so, and, and what's, your, what's your connection to the event tonight? Uh, the event tonight, actually, my wife, Mary Rose Dolezal, is the development director for Reclaim. And she has to be in Detroit tonight. So I am representing our household to help support Reclaim, uh, which obviously does amazing work to help people of all um, identities, gender identities, uh, really feel like they can be their authentic selves and feel self-worth. Uh, my name is Zachariah White. Uh, I'm a member of the board of uh, Reclaim. Uh, I'm the longest serving member of the board. Largely my role now is uh, uh, providing historical context for whatever else happens. Every, every organization needs that. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone who uh, can say this is where we've done, where have we been, what we've done, and, and uh, I hope that can inform where we're going next. So you've been around for a while. Tell me, how, how did you get involved? Um, I heard about Reclaim uh, when I was, uh, uh, my spouse and I were doing some uh, hosting for the LGBT Youth Host Home Program through Avenues for Homeless Youth. And uh, one of the uh, youth that we were um, hosting uh, had a connection with Reclaim, and I think that's how we first learned about Reclaim. Uh, and uh, I was looking for opportunities to volunteer and get involved with organizations where uh, in the work organizationally they were looking at issues of white supremacy, uh, racism, and other forms of oppression, and that's central to Reclaim's mission. Uh, and so I just wanted to find some way to support that work. Um, and uh, I have a little bit of uh, financial background. I run my own business and my partner's a couple of businesses uh, financially and so I thought I was just signing up to help them keep the books a little bit or something like that. And that that's how they get you. That's how they right? That's right. That's and how not, yeah, that's how the nonprofits get you and then, then you're hooked, right? Yeah, and now it's five years later uh, and, uh, and I've seen uh, Reclaim grow from a few offices uh, in a, in a uh, converted house to uh, our location now uh, in St. Paul with several offices and many more people on staff and uh, a much larger budget and thankfully I'm no longer uh, responsible for the the books uh, because it's it's grown beyond me. I wanted to ask you about your involvement with uh, with Avenues too. So we, we've talked to those folks uh, a few times about their host home program. I don't think I've ever spoken to someone directly that's participated in the program. T tell me about that experience. Yeah. Um, 
Well, one lovely thing about that program is uh, that they uh, have the hosts fill out applications and the youth get to review the applications of the host and pick their hosts rather than being placed in a home. They have a choice in where they stay. And I think that's a really respectful um, way to work with young people and, and helping them have agency about you know, the, the services that they access and how. Yeah, and, and obviously you've been around Reclaim for a while. Uh, what would you tell people who are thinking of getting involved in an organization about, about Reclaim and why it's been so rewarding? Sure. So Reclaim uh, has direct impact on the lives of young people. Um, there's, we uh, center concerns of queer and trans youth of color in particular, um, and uh, the stories that come out of the youth who work with the therapists and, and access other services at Reclaim uh, are filled with reclaiming parts of themselves and reclaiming their lives uh, from different forms of oppression so that they get to live their lives more fully. Maida? And, and what's your connection to the event tonight? Oh, I am definitely performing and definitely a supporter. So, no question about that. Yeah, so actually, uh, I've, I've been looking forward to speaking with you ever since uh, we did our, our episodes about Project Q, which you were featured in a little while back. So, I'm really happy that we're actually able to connect here tonight. Um, tell, me, tell me what you've been up to since then. Um, I've been working on a new album. I've also been doing theater and comedy and really getting my feet wet with that, um, that, art, that kind of performance. So it's really fun and really challenging at the same time. Tonight I will be performing music, uh, new stuff, and uh, mixed with old stuff. So I'm excited. Yeah, and I know you're all over online. Where can people find your music and uh, find out what you're up to? I'm on CD Baby. I'm on iTunes. I'm on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, all that junk. All that good stuff. Awesome. Thanks so much, and uh, good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Felicia Washington C. I'm the executive director of Reclaim. Reclaim is a social justice agency that offers mental health support to queer and transgender youth between the ages of 13 and 25. 90% of our youth identify as trans or gender nonconforming, and that's pretty much the, you know, that's who we, we serve, although we serve all of the letters of the LGBTQ alphabet. The core of what we do is individual family and group therapy for youth. That's the heart of our program. Um, but we also offer two other programs. One is a professional development program that we offer to developing and entry level practitioners of color who want to gain competency in working with queer and trans youth. And the other piece that we do is community education. So we go out to school districts and businesses and various different social platforms for people who want to serve our youth better. And that's kind of that, that's kind of an interesting place that we're in right now is that uh, there, there is a lot of education to be done. There, there really is a lot of education to be done in the community. But on the, on the flip side of that, there seems to be more people now than ever that, that are interested in, in getting that knowledge and gaining that knowledge and that understanding. Yeah, it's a really important time that trans issues have really risen to the forefront. I'd, you know, it certainly, they've been increasing and gaining momentum in the last 10 years. Most significantly, I would say in the last three to five years, that there's been... In, an explosion of visibility of trans activists and artists and performers and politicians um, that have really uh, come forward and identified themselves as leaders in the community and it's on their heels that we're able to do the work that we do in community with youth. Which is awesome and so tonight uh, this this event that's going on tonight can, can you tell me a little about the event? Right, so this is the third year that we've done Art Heels, and Art Heels originally started as an open house. Reclaim had just moved to our new space, which is located at 771 Raymond Avenue in St. Paul, and we really wanted to invite people and welcome them into the space, and it was really billed as a celebration, a celebration of art and healing, to find that there is only one way that people address their mental health issues. And there are so many other ways, including the arts, performance, dance, music, um, visual art, video, film. There's a million ways that people use to express themselves and to find their own healing. So Art Heals wanted to capture that, and we wanted to celebrate the youth, and we wanted to celebrate wellness. So we did it the first year as an open house at Reclaim. The event was such a success that we then moved to Intermedia Arts um, and doubled our size. And then this year we're at the Turf Club. 
Of course, so this is one way that people can come and support the organization is by, is by coming to events like this. What, what are some other ways? I imagine there are a lot of other ways that people can contribute to the efforts. Uh, the work that we do at Reclaim? Yeah, absolutely. The Reclaim has several opportunities a year that we really call out that we need volunteers, that we also need volunteers at other times of the year too. But certainly, I always say our signature fundraising event actually happens in February, and that is Celebrate the Love. And that is an amazing brunch that we do. Um, that is a build as a fundraiser. Last year um, in February, this year I should say in February, we had over 400 attendees. We raised $95,000 for Reclaim and we have 23 volunteers this year for that event alone. So Celebrate the Love, uh, sponsoring and being a part of that event is a key way that people can support Reclaim. And then finally this event, Art Heals, is another volunteer event that we really encourage people to participate in. And then if you hook up with Reclaim, it is, there are other ways to support us and other smaller volunteer opportunities to do all the way from helping us paint <laughs> to uh, being a part of other social events. If folks want to help, you'll, you'll put them to work, it sounds like. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we'll put you to work. And where can people find out about all these opportunities to, to support the work you're doing? Yep. Um, ReclaimLGBTYouth.care. That's our website. Check it out. Take a look. All the opportunities are available on the website. Thank you so much for your time. It was great meeting you and great talking to you. Yeah, thank you. The TC Pride Podcast is a production of the Nonpod, nonprofit podcast community at Twin Cities Pride. Subscribe now on iTunes, on Android, or by email at tcpridepodcast.org. Because we're in this together. Nonpod turns your email newsletter, blog, or video content into a more powerful, more personal, more intimate, on-demand listening experience. Your podcast, your story, your voice, simplified, amplified. Learn more now at nonpod.com.